Welcome everyone to another episode on the Virtual Bacon channel. As you guys can see, the market is on Armageddon right now because of, not exactly because of uh, Bitcoin halving or any internal forces, rather it's uh, due to the conflict, impending conflict that we have going on right now with uh, Iran and Israel. Now, like the title suggests, I really believe this is a buying opportunity. If you have been around for not even the last two cycles, but even just this previous half a cycle, we have seen three of such conflicts already. And yes, there will be a lot of short term volatility, turmoil. But as long as the trend in Bitcoin and in crypto overall sustains, and as long as you manage your risk and your position well, this is definitely an opportunity. So that's what we're going to get into today. I'm not an expert on global, you know, geopolitical, whatever, but um, I am a, a firm believer here that this is an opportunity for us. So we're going to get into that today, not only on Bitcoin, but also on the rest of the market. I'm going to give you exactly all of the list of altcoins that you can see on the tabs here that I am targeting. And I'll give you guys my estimates as well as to how deep this short-term correction can go. And looking at actually not only Bitcoin, but not only uh, individual altcoins, but also the total altcoin market cap, the total three altcoin market cap, and looking at where that's heading in terms of the next support level, which then we can translate to large cap and mid cap altcoins uh, for price targets. Okay, so welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years, and I have invested in over 100 crypto companies. On this channel, we share views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. Okay, so um, really quick on my stance on the market right now. So as you can tell from our last video from yesterday, I firmly believe that this uh, correction that we have, you should go back to watch that previous video, but I am in the firm belief that this current correction uh, leading into the volatility of the Bitcoin halving is not going to drop below 60K. I wanna find the exact timeline here. I don't really have it. Uh, hmm. I can't really find it here, but my, the TA that we had since last, uh, last live stream is that I really don't see us breaking below this, uh, parallel channel with the bottom at 60 K. And that's a few reasons. Number one, the fractal that we have had, uh, in January leading up to the January main event on the 10th, which was the Bitcoin ETF approvals also brought us huge swings on the upside of this uh, parallel channel and also on the downside. So it wicked above uh, the channel and then it wicked below the channel as well, but didn't close below it uh, on a weekly time frame. And you see these were definitely good buying opportunities on the wick below the channel, uh, which led to the subsequent rally after. So this is kind of what I'm expecting here. We have had wicks above. Now that we are looking to wick below the, uh, the range, uh, 60k so that also coincides with the 100 day exponential moving average the ema here this higher average line so you see this is where we bounced off of on uh the week after the bitcoin etf approval as well and this dates all the way back to the october rally which kicked off the uh officially the bitcoin bull market so all in all bitcoin's price once tomorrow's candle comes in, will most likely already be at the 100-day uh, exponential moving average because of how dramatic this current um, this current wave is. But the EMA will actually continue to tick up. So in the next couple of days, the 100-day EMA will already be hit. So historically, this is a really, really good buying opportunity. Uh, there are only two main levels that you need to watch for each bull run. This has been true for the 2017 bull run and the 2020 bull run, which is that the 200 day EMA, this lower EMA line, let's give it a uh, more obvious number. Uh, let's give it like 
purple. So this purple line is the bottom line for the bull market. This needs to hold for the bull market to hold, right? You see, uh, this is the case for the 2021 bull run and then also back in the 2017 bull run. However, once the bull run actually starts, this level really doesn't get tested that much. It really comes down to the 100-day exponential moving average EMA, which typically acts as the bounce point. So you see bounce here, bounce here, and then in the 2021 cycle as well, bounce. And then this level wasn't even tested much in the 2021. So now that we are really getting to uh, the new bull market again, so 100-day EMA has already been tested once, and now just this week, we are going to test this 100-day EMA again. So that sits right at, uh, right now, 58,250. Again, this is going to take up a little bit more because prices are still trading above this EMA level. So we're looking at 59,000 to 60,000. Potentially a wick there because of this uh, World War Three news that we're getting and potentially, you know, wick into this range as people panic, something like this can totally happen, but I don't expect us to close in this range uh, on a weekly time frame. So something like this, uh, sharp wick down, sharp, drop, uh, sharp bounce up. So when that happens, you might say, okay, like then how do we avoid this crash? My honest advice here is to not use leverage, to sit in spot positions in Bitcoin, in Ethereum, in the large, large cap altcoins that you're bullish on, and do not use leverage. As long as you don't use leverage, you can start averaging in quite easily. So that's what I'm doing on all of the altcoins that we'll cover today, as well as on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and on large caps. Starting to average in with the dry powder that I still have uh, from current levels and continue to average down in the next two to three days when the volatility comes. Uh, my full expectation is that once this blows over, uh, once people price in this news and once the Bitcoin halving volatility plays out, going into May, we should have much higher. I'm still in the firm belief of that. Uh, so that's on Bitcoin. Now, let me just give you guys directly the main positions I'm targeting right now. So aside from Bitcoin, there are only two other uh, very large positions that I see are worth having right now. So of course, Ethereum, look at this chart on Ethereum. We are literally very near the 200 daily exponential moving average, right? That is only at 26, uh, 2600 $2,700. And we're only less than 10% away from that. This 200-day EMA level is such a over, heavily oversold level that I, I just cannot emphasize this enough. Ethereum is a screaming buy right now between the 100-day to 200-day exponential moving average. Historically speaking, you can look back at not only one cycle, two cycles even for as long as Ethereum has existed, as long as we are in a bull run and as long as you buy in between this uh, support band, between the 100-day and 200-day exponential moving average, it's always been a good idea. So this isn't even the full chart. I'm going to try to find the full chart here. Uh, if I can get it here. So look at this. Since Ethereum has existed in 2015, this is the 2015 bull run. Anytime that Ethereum was in this 100-day to 200-day exponential moving average support band, killer buys here, all in this range. Yes, sometimes it does wick through, and that's why you should really pay attention to not use high leverage during these volatility times. But all good buys here. And then, of course, in the 2017 bull run, good buy here, good buy here good entry here, even, you know, at the end of the bull run, this level still tested for a bounce. And then this was bear market. And then we fast forward to 2020 and 2021, you see anything between this support band was a killer buy. So that's why you're not going to get a better opportunity like today for 
something like of an entry on Ethereum. This is this is screaming by to me. Now again, have to emphasize this. Do not be too greedy and do not use leverage here. Consider what's happening right now. Consider that we have a geopolitical com uh, conflict in the global scale and we have the Bitcoin halving coming up. There will be high volatility. So there can be wicks. We're looking at some potentially large wicks, something like this, right? So it could happen. Something like this could happen. So do not use any leverage. Do not be greedy. But as long as you're just buying spot, this is a very, very easy entry for me right here. So that's on Ethereum. And then number three, for the from a very long time now, this is the first time that I am actually eyeing Solana as an entry. You guys know, like, I have not been very bullish on Solana on its prospects because compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum, Solana's upside just wasn't there before uh, when it was like barely, you know, 4x return uh, expected um, compared to Bitcoin Ethereum, which can do at least 3 to 4x. But now, Solana, look at this drop on Solana. <laughs> coming all the way back down to the previous support range between $90 to around $110. This is a weekly support range, as you can see on these candle closes. From $90 to $110, we are almost there. So also eyeing Solana, again, not on leverage, but anything that I, that I can get on Solana right now, $120, I'm starting to average in. And if I can average that entry all the way down to something around hundred dollars gonna be a killer buying opportunity for me because so my stance on solana is that from these high high levels i expect solana to hit maybe like seven hundred dollar ish at a pico top um for this bull run so from these uh march levels that was only about a 4x and compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum, which can do three to four X, that wasn't worth it. But now if I can get average entry, hundred to $110, I mean, that's like 6.5 X, seven X. And again, that's going to be very high probability returns and very high probability out performance returns versus Bitcoin and Ethereum again. And that's why Solana is again, actually a good buy right now. Uh, okay, so that's Solana, and these are the only three large caps that I'm actually like very comfortable scaling in a large amount of. Now, when it comes to the mid caps and even like large cap other altcoins, but not in this like super high caliber, you have to consider how much further these coins can drop. So for that, something very useful is total three. So I have this chart right here. This is the total market cap of all altcoins, uh, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. So you see here, the total three market cap is also dropping very, very significantly. Uh, earlier this week, the total market cap uh, of all altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum was at 730 billion. And today that's at 580 billion. So the altcoin market is in an absolute bloodbath right now. We can see in a, basically any, any other coin that you pick on CoinGecko right now. Uh, and how much further is this to drop? Well, we just need to zoom out. So zooming out to daily and even weekly timeframes, we can see that there is a very significant support. Uh, let's take away these moving averages. So there is a very significant support on the total three market cap at this range between 470 billion to around $500 billion. This dates all the way back to May to July, 2021. And then it even dates back to the pre, uh, pre rally in the 2021 bull run, right? That was the resistance range here. And then this range was tested here and then brief consolidation here before the bull run finally kicked off uh, beginning of this year. So this range, 470 billion to 500 billion in total three market cap, I really don't think this will break. Now, this doesn't look like much, right? Even if we get a correction down here for a bounce, that would still look quite healthy. That would be 
complete flush out of all the froth in the altcoin market before the next wave up. But look at how close we are to that point now. That's only around a 15% drop from current price. If you count the wick that we just had when the news broke and when Bitcoin had the first flush, that's maybe like 12% away. So between 12 to 15% away for the total three market cap drop is kind of the maximum drawdown that I'm expecting for large cap altcoins now because altcoins have dropped so much. So this is really good. This gives me kind of a, a benchmark for how much further uh, downside I'm expecting. And this is the benchmark, about 15% away. So with that in mind, let's look at some of the top altcoins that I'm targeting. So uh, I'm not going to go top down. Instead, I'm going to go by category. So when in doubt, we don't want to target very niche altcoins or like whatever, like new narrative and et cetera, et cetera, that are potentially popular. We want to target things that are proven, that have retail attention and things that have strong catalyst events coming up in the next one to two months. So we have a couple categories here. We have AI, we have gaming, we have infra, and we have uh, meme coins, uh, only the popular meme coins on the most established ecosystems. And then we have the two narratives that we have already covered in our last live stream yesterday, which are CK Sync narrative and Bitcoin runes narrative. These two are very, very popular, very strong this month because of catalyst events. So let's get into it. First, we have the AI narrative. So in the AI narrative, I have a few coins here. So I have, uh, how many coins? Four coins here. First of all, I have Fluence, fresh launched coin. Uh, this is backed by some of the largest tier one VCs, Multicoin, 1KX, etc. Decentralized compute platform meant for AI. It fits in the deep end narrative as well. And $750 million FTV. And this is much, much lower than some of the leading AI coins that you'll see on the market, Render, Akash, etc and super low float as well, $36 million market cap circulating, only 5% of the supply circulating. So very heavily controlled supply. So for a fresh coin like this, definitely a lot of upside. Another one that I'm eyeing heavily is NetMind. So this is the Chinese BitTensor Tao. A lot of the Chinese community are really into this for a comparison to BitTensor. And what some, a lot of people don't know is that, look at this fully diluted market cap. It says it's 72 billion, but these guys actually have burned 99.9% .9 of their supply very recently. So the maximum supply is not 10 billion. It's actually 190 million now. So that translates to 740, uh, 1.35 billion fully diluted market cap right now, which really isn't that high. Uh, so a lot of major Chinese funds are in this, and this is one that uh, for sure is going to get a lot of hype once um, the supply reduction news comes into play, once people realize that this has happened, and once they get more uh, legit exchange listings and uh, potentially a chain migration because this is only trading on BSC right now, which is not, not a lot of people are paying attention there. Another such example is GamerCoin, GamerHash. This is one that I have already covered. So you see this first hype wave already played out and price is starting to correct a bit. This, a lot of people think it's only a gaming coin, but actually they have a full rebrand to a full um, AI infrastructure and they are only... Um, utilizing the demand side uh, from these gaming machines that people have installed uh, on their PCs. So this is uh, having a full rebrand very soon. And once this news comes live, again, I think this is going to be one of the most competitive AI coins. And you see here, $100 million market cap for a very established deep-in project that has exi existed for multiple years. And this is heavily, heavily exposure in the Korean market, very rare as well on Bithumb. So 
definitely one that I have a uh, close eye on and I have a large portion of this in my portfolio as well. Uh, and then last one I have is virtual protocol. This is another rebrand play. So uh, if you guys don't know, there's a gaming DAO project called PassDAO. They have rebranded to a uh, AI and gaming protocol that is the first one that exists on the base network. And this one, I believe I've covered in our base ecosystem altcoin video. And this is the last AI altcoin that I'm buying. So you see, these are not your typical like render, Akash, you know, like whatever, like um, fetch AI, singularity in that bit tensor, whatever. Those are still, in my opinion, like fairly priced. When we're talking about like five, $6 billion market cap coins in the AI narrative, sure, like you can buy them, but the upside is, isn't is really there for them. And that's why I have these four uh, on today's list. Okay, moving on to the gaming narrative, I have even more. So I have uh, two sectors. So we have individual games that are uh, recently launched that are very high caliber and raise a lot of money, but because of the market downturn, they haven't gotten the initial hype wave post listing. And then we also have established um, gaming infrastructure coins. So first let's get into some of the uh, new games. So I have three on the list. Uh, let me see here. We have, first one is called Apiron. So I have covered this coin, not only post launch, but also for the past year or so, I have mentioned it many times. This is one of the most established teams that have existed since 2021. And I first got engaged with them in 2021 when they were still building their game. And now this is three years in the making. So these guys really know what they're doing and they have outlasted the market for three years now in the last bear. So just because this price is down, I have no fear that they will come back. So uh, only at $480 million in FDV. So uh, I know for a fact that these guys raised even in the private rounds in 2021, way above the 100 to $200 million valuation mark. So we're getting very close to even the private sale numbers, only about 2x away. So um, this is one that I'm watching. And another one uh, that I have already mentioned before as well, Corpo. These guys are the best hustler teams in entire crypto gaming. So for the past three years, daily updates for roadmap updates, what their game have uh, new updates, new developments. And you see here, they have had the first hype wave already since the coin launched uh, from 30 cents to dollar 20 and now back down to 60. So about a 50% correction already from the top. Again, this is going to be one of something to watch as well. And look at this getting very close to that first consolidation range between 55 cent to 66 cents. So this is a buy for me. And in fact, I have never even sold my uh, first entries since this 33 cent mark at listing. So continue to hold this. I, I do believe all of these gaming coins that we have mentioned today, they should be in the multi-billion dollar mark, uh, market caps by the end of this bull run. And then a third one, do I have this on? Yeah, I have it on the list. It's called Planet Mojo. So this is one that I tweeted about a lot uh, as well. Again, these guys have raised over $10 million since 2021 and have been building this game for over three years. And now look at this market cap, $90 million FDV. You cannot get better than that. And if you look at their tokenomics, like a lot of the private sale investors even got in at like 60, $70 million FDV. So these are some crazy cheap prices. Planet Mojo, another one that uh, I will be looking to scoop up in this dip. So that's in the uh, fresh released games. And then when it comes to gaming infra, I have four coins here. So of course we have uh, the longtime channel favorite. I'm just going to give you straight up super. So I have not talked about super for a while because the rally has gotten quite overextended in my opinion. So, uh, 
we have been accumulating since this entire range in the 60 cents range. And in fact, we first started covering it in that 20 to 30 cents range. You guys know, you guys can like go back down the channel and see my entire coverage of Superverse. So once, you know, Super got above that dollar mark, I really wasn't covering it nearly as much because this rally was, I mean, it was 2x even from uh, just our, uh, I think like January coverage, right? After their major announcement and major roadmap got released. But now you see this price is coming all the way back down to this support range. So the previous range between 50 cent to 71 cent, now price is at 78. So again, going back to that total three uh, potential dip opportunity that we see. So all these altcoins account for maybe a potentially maximum 15% uh, drawdown from current price and look at where those entry levels would be. So on super, that gives us right in the middle of this support range between 50 to 70 cents. So if I can get an average entry, anything below 70 cents, that would be killer opportunity for me. So again, I will be accumulating more super again in this range, anything below 70 cents. And then a couple more here that have strong catalyst events coming up. We have Wilder World. This is one that I have been eyeing a lot and you guys will hear a lot more about Wilder World in this upcoming year. These guys basically have been building, again, three years of content. Uh, they started first from a racing game, but they have built out their own, home, own metaverse. They have their own chain. They have two coins in their ecosystem, the wild token and the meow chain. Sounds very <laughs> silly, but this is um, three years in the making. And these guys also have over $100 million in their treasury. And look at the market cap, $190 million market cap, 360 million fully valued valuation, just a huge sleeping giant. And more recently, they have also partnered with Samsung, a huge partnership uh, for global distribution. This is not something that you see like a, you know, mid cap, fresh new project could make. So Wilder World, I have been accumulating quite a lot between uh, this 50 to 80 cent range. And now that price is back down to 70 cents, going to start accumulating again. Uh, and then a couple more here, we have new one here, Games GG. These guys are really hustlers in the gaming infrastructure and game discovery space, because these guys are a new coin, but the team behind this is actually the team behind Pokestarter. So uh, the history of this Games GG platform is that the Pokestarter team, they got together and they really wanted to tackle all the gaming projects that they have inbound and create this discovery game launcher and cloud gaming infrastructure that uh, players can come in from the browser and start playing these Web3 games. So these guys have basically partnered with every single Web3 game acting as that discovery portal for them and fresh new coin that has just launched. And currently the total supply of this, I believe it's 1 billion. So the fully diluted market cap is only 150 million. And even less so the circulating market cap, less than 10 million. This has such a light token float. So I have no doubt that once uh, they sustain this initial dump wave following the like short-term volatility, this should have another rally for sure. Uh, that's a games GG. And then the last infra coin in the gaming sector we have is GuildFi. So if you guys are not familiar with GuildFi, they are the top two, um, actually top three gaming DAO projects uh, and gaming guild projects that have launched in the 2022 wave. So they, uh, the other two competitors are YGG and Mirror Circle. So you guys know the whole history of those two other projects. YGG went on Binance and Mirror Circle also went on Binance, but then later on they did a rebrand and that is now the Beam project, uh, which sits at like over $2 billion market cap. So Mirror Circle and GuildFi both did very similar uh, LBP token sales racing over $100 million. 
And Guildfy still has not did the rebrand. They have kept all their treasury and now they're finally about to release something uh, new to their ecosystem. So you can go on the Guildfy Twitter and follow this. So the major release that they have coming up is called Sentry. This is essentially uh, the same kind of rebrand for a whole infra platform like what Beam did for Mirror Circle. But now Guildfy is releasing this new platform called Sentry that will sit on top of their current ecosystem with their token, with their treasury and their player base and the uh, current uh, ecosystem of games that they have onboarded. So that's for Guildfy and very similar to we, when we covered um, Mirror Circle when it was in that 200 to 300 million dollar range. Guildfy is again in that same range, 300 million dollar market cap. This most likely should be one to two billion dollars in market cap once this volatility uh, plays out and once um, the Sentry platform release comes live and people realize that these guys have a very similar playbook to Mirror Circle and Beam. So this is another one that I have already been accumulating. And now that price is down even more, I'm going to accumulate more. Okay, so that's gaming. And that those are all the gaming coins that uh, I have my eyes on right now. These are the ones that are trading. There is still a lot of gaming coins that are up and coming. We'll make follow up video on that. So look out for that video. Um, in the infra side, so there are very specific picks that I have right now. Um, we don't want to target something that everyone already knows, like very established layer two coins like Arbitrum, Optimism. I don't think those are so trendy right now. So there are basically uh, three areas that I think could have um, interest in the infra section. So the number one is the cross section between decentralized computing and AI. So the infrastructure providers there uh, and the ones that are established enough could see another hype wave. So the two main ones that we have already covered in last month, uh, Neural Protocol. So Neural Protocol not only not only is a layer one blockchain, but it's also a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Decentralized computing platform. You will see very soon, they, they have their whole Near AI initiative that they're starting to tease out. And uh, go back to our previous video, uh, for the month of March, you'll see that going to the NVIDIA GTC hype, a lot of the previous history of the, the near founder has been revealed that they were actually an AI research company before going to blockchain. So they have a whole initiative called near AI. This is going to be released later down this year. So that's near. And then the other one is Arweave. So Arweave has just recently released their decentralized computing platform called AOD computer. And now, uh, I have tweeted about this recently, but the founder of Arweave, Sam uh, Williams, I believe. Yeah, that's his name. So Sam Williams, the founder of Arweave, actually tweeted very recently again that uh, if I can find this tweet again. So they have said that they have essentially worked on two main products in the bear market. Uh, I need to really find this here. Bum, bum, bum. Here. So during the bear market, Forward Research, this is the development company behind Arweave, they focused on two major works. Uh, in February, they launched the first one called ALD Computer. This is the decentralized computer sitting on top of Arweave. Launch for the second is now on the horizon. Can't wait to share it with you. So there is a major upcoming release in the Arweave ecosystem, just as big as the AOD computer launch. A lot of people don't know this. Like, it's um, it's very obvious tweet here. Uh, and this is gonna be like one to two months down the line. Once this gets released, we should see another hype wave coming to Arweave, just like this first hype wave, right? So remember, when the first AOD computer got launched, it was right around this, uh, this range, and that brought Arweave's price from that $10 range all the way up to 40. And now we're back down to 23. We just simply need to be patient, manage our position and wait. And once that second release comes live, Arweave definitely should make new highs above this uh, $40 range. 
very easy to play for me uh, to hold, to be honest. So these are the decentralized computing infra. Now I have two other narratives in the infra sector. So there is one that was hugely popular in the beginning of the year, but now is have seen such a big bloodbath that I really think it's becoming interesting again. And that's a Celestia. <laughs> so everyone knows the history of Celestia, right? It like everyone and their mother was getting into Celestia and like staking it for airdrops in January. But after January, right? Like I was very vocal about this. I said that Celestia at $20 billion market cap at $20 range, it made no sense to me to buy that. But now we have had more than a 50% drawdown from $20 to $8.50. That's like, um, what is this? 60% uh, drawdown now from the top. Looking quite good, to be fair. This is, Celestia is still very strong tech. And most of the blockchains out there today integrate modular blockchain and integrate um, data availability using either Celestia or like EigenDA or Near DA, but that whole narrative is still heavily dominated by Celestia. So in the infra sector, going to this next bull run, you cannot write off Celestia. And that's why like at this $8 range, I'm again thinking that Celestia is a good bit because compare $8 billion FDV of Celestia to some of the other like honestly kind of shitty infra projects in this price range. Celestia is one of the most novel projects to come out in this cycle. It's just kind of the, the short-term hype of it was a little bit too much in January. But now I think that hype is fair. At 8 billion, I think it's a good bet. And uh, if you want some beta play on Celestia as well, there is one specific ecosystem project that I am looking at. It's a very low cap project, but a lot of people have never even heard of this and it's called Tresto. $8 million market cap. <laughs> this is tiny, tiny cap. But these are um, this project is the only gateway that can bridge between Celestia and uh, the world of Ethereum. And they're also partnering with Arbitrum to launch um, a whole Arbitrum orbit chain that can bring the power of Celestia and uh, data availability to all Arbitrum uh, orbit chains. So not only can you launch like um, your own chain using Celestia DA and integrating Arbitrum DA, uh, so, sorry, integrating Arbitrum Orbit for layer two and layer threes, but you can also directly bridge that uh, those assets between Celestia and Arbitrum. So uh, this is one ecosystem project that actually directly serves Celestia versus um, basically all the other Celestia ecosystem projects out there they kind of have overlap with something else. Most of the so-called Celestia projects are just using Celestia, but not directly integrating the TIA token and serving the liquidity of uh, TIA and acting as a bridge. So this is one um, Celestia ecosystem project that I have in my portfolio. Okay, uh, that's Celestia as infra. I think it's honestly starting to get undervalued here. And last but not least, when it comes to infra that is potentially um, going to be popular later down in this year, that's with parallel processing blockchains, hyperscalable blockchains. So you guys probably have heard of uh, things like Monad, even from our channel as well. So you see, um, we have made a deep dive on Monad comparing it to Solana. So Monad seems to be like the huge next generation blockchain that can like scale hundred times faster than, Sol uh, than Solana. But Monad is still at least like nine months away for their testnet. And their mainnet is potentially even like 12 months away. So before that happens in the parallel blockchain narrative, uh, there are a few other competitors that are much closer to mainnet launch. Uh, I have made a video about this before in our fastest blockchains video. So you can see directly on here, we have Say. Say will be launching their Say V2 mainnet, I believe in Q3 of this year, which is like uh, just three to six months away. And once that launches, Say will be 
one of the few competitors to Solana that could potentially even outperform Solana uh, in performance. And also Savy2 will, will support Ethereum virtual machine. So directly you have a EVM enabled chain that you can connect to and use from MetaMask, but is uh, potentially faster and more scalable than Solana. And this is very close to mainnet already. Uh, and say having had its huge run up in the first half of this year, peaking at like over $1, it's now down more than 55%. So this is, um, this is one that I'm, honestly, I think this is quite undervalued now. 4.4 billion FDV compared to, you know, Solana's, what is it still at right now? Right now like, like 50 billion FDV, right? We have Monad, um, even the private round fundraising for Monad is higher than $4 billion valuation now. So the fact that Say, which is uh, much closer to Mainnet, only if valued at 4.4, fully diluted, fully trading, I think that's undervalued. Uh, and another one that is a very established player and also has their hyperscalable parallel blockchain releasing in the Q3 of this year, that's Phantom. So Phantom, uh, if you guys don't know, is actually the oldest EVM blockchain just after Ethereum. They are older than Polygon, older than Binance Smart Chain, uh, and they have continued to thrive in, I believe this is their third market now, uh, third cycle. They first started in the 2018 cycle and then 2021, and now the 2024 cycle. So this cycle, they're really focusing on the layer two narrative and the hyperscalable blockchain narrative. So Phantom have uh, their major release called Sonic. I'm not sure if you can find this on their, uh, yeah, high performance blockchain. And this isn't even their latest uh, finality and transaction cost numbers. In fact, these numbers are kind of out of date. So if you go on their Twitter, they have been teasing a lot about their upcoming release with Phantom Sonic. This is going to be the hyperscalable blockchain that is com compatible with the EVM, with uh, Ethereum virtual machine, with MetaMask, but is comparable in uh, scalability as Solana. So this is going to be released in Q3 of this year. And again, looking at this valuation, right? 1.8 billion heavily, heavily undervalued right now. Uh, you see that this previous consolidation range for Phantom between 33 cent to 55 cent, we are now very close to that number at 57 cent. And if you, uh, if you were in the market in the 2021 cycle, you will remember that there was a major rotation wave uh, when Avalanche first got popular. So Phantom was the kind of the close brother to Avalanche whenever Avalanche had a rally, Phantom also had a rally. So Phantom was trading at kind of uh, half of the valuation of AVAX. However, in this cycle, AVAX has already uh, blasted way past like the 10, uh, it even sits at $22 billion FDV now because it had such a big uh, hype wave. So Phantom now has such a valuation gap to even uh, match half the valuation of AVAX. So I really believe like by the end of this year and end of this cycle, if Fandom is not at a $10 billion valuation FDV, like I think that's that would be very surprising to me. Uh, looking at the history of this project, looking at how they are able to always catch on to the narrative compared to the other layer one, layer two, whatever hyperscalable blockchain, EVM blockchain, whatever it is, and the fact that these guys still have huge treasury and those deep connections with the DeFi crowd, um, the Curve team, um, what do you call it? Uh, the Synthetics, um, Compound, Aave, these guys are all uh, Andrew investors in the new wave of uh, Phantom's comeback with Phantom Sonic. I really think this is going to be a $10 million plus project by the end of this run and potentially even by the end of this year. So that's looking at a uh, five to six X return from current prices. So Phantom, one of the few infra projects that I actually have in my portfolio and I'm still accumulating. Okay, uh, that's 
all of the infra projects and let's see uh the last sector is meme coins so i'm not going to go too deep into these meme coins because there's really not much to talk about for most meme coins my approach to meme coins is that if you want the highest tier meme coins you could bet on some of the market leaders directly you can pick either dogecoin pay uh if you like using solana you can buy with i think these three are most likely going to be the outperformers of this run that leads kind of that retail appeal if you actually want to bet on smaller meme coins the only way to do some like comparative analysis on meme coin is to get um officially supported meme coins by certain ecosystems what i mean by that is you have each individual chain and when the chain actually comes out and support a meme coin very publicly, then that meme coin really elevates itself uh, against the rest. And usually there's only one of these meme coins for each ecosystem. So that's uh, what I have been tweeting about a lot on my Twitter. Uh, you can find it just directly on the on my tweets list. I even believe like if you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see it. But the few meme, meme coins that I have right now, so first one, Puff. This is the main meme coin directly supported by Mantle. And then I have Toshi, the first and oldest meme coin on base. We have Foxy. This is a new meme coin launched uh, on OKX and on Bybit this week. And this is directly supported by Linea, the parent company of Consensus and MetaMask. And please note the uh, Fox avatar very similar to the metamask avatar this is like as close of a relationship as you can get and then we have uh what's the other one uh, there is one that you cannot really find on coin gecko but i have a bag of this as well and i have tweeted about this before it's called phantom goat this is the main meme coin on phantom so as long as you're bullish on phantom like i am this is also very attractive now uh the fact that this has official support is very obvious because the Phantom Goat is actually a node operator and the largest holder of Phantom Coin itself. So this uh, this person, Phantom Goat, is actually uh, a holder of $350 million worth of Phantom tokens. And uh, when you go on uh, Phantom Explorer, when you look at the nodes of uh, Phantom, Explorer notes. You can find that uh, if I can see it here. Validators leaderboard. So ranking by IDs. You see that. Uh, if I can find it here. Yeah, this isn't the most obvious one. Maybe this one. Validators. Staking. I think this will do it. Yeah, so you see here, these are all the top validators on Phantom. There are 56 of them only. And when you rank by total amount of Phantom staked, you see that Phantom Goat runs four of the top seven validators on Phantom, totaling over 350 million Phantoms of uh, token staked. This is crazy, right? So, uh, so this guy like is literally the number one whale of on Phantom, and he launched a meme coin in his own name called Phantom Goat, and on the Phantom chain. So this is a uh, one meme coin that I have actually quite a large bag of in my portfolio, and uh, because of this close relationship, this guy is so rich that like it's an easy bet for me betting on his meme coin. Uh, and this is as close of a ecosystem support as you can get from Phantom as well. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So those are all the meme coins that I have in my portfolio. Um, if you want a main retail coin for meme coin, the one I like a lot is Pepe. So I'm also eyeing to buy more Pepe on this dip. But honestly, you can buy Doge, you can buy Whiff. Most likely they all rally together. Uh, and 
yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, the last two short term narratives that I am very bullish on ZK Sync and Bitcoin Ruins. I'm not going to repeat them again. You should just go check out my last live stream that I did yesterday. Uh, for the two crypto sectors to explode after Bitcoin halving, I gave the whole breakdown of why ZK Sync is most likely going to launch this month. And this is why I'm very bullish on ZK Sync ecosystem projects. Uh, the main one is Koi Finance. And then uh, the other narrative is Bitcoin Runes. So Bitcoin Runes is also launching uh, their whole protocol right at Bitcoin halving, which is six days away. And this is why I'm buying a lot of uh, runes, uh, pre-runes projects using Ordinals, using BRC20 wallets. And this is why I bought a lot of uh, Bitcoin pu uh, rune pups and runestone uh, using Bitcoin wallet. So check that out, this video uh, directly on the channel. Okay, so that's it. Uh, a lot of coins that we have mentioned today. Again, I have the same feelings like you guys. I don't know if you guys can tell. So when I see this kind of this kind of uh, sharp drop down, like today, and then I go on Twitter, I look at the huge like global news that shocks everyone. Part of me is saying, oh, like I should de-risk. I should like sell all my crypto, <laughs> go into stables. But the other like fundamental side of me is also saying that, okay, let's break this down. Have we seen global conflicts before in this last two years? We have, right? We have seen uh, the first like uh, conflict between the US and Iran. We have seen the conflict between uh, China and Taiwan. We have seen conflict between, of course, Russia and, Israel, uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. We have seen uh, Israel-Palestine conflict. And now this is, um, uh, there, there are probably a couple more that I have missed. And now we have seen Iran and Israel. So is this a very, very bad, very sudden thing? Yes. But looking at history, right? Looking at the price history in the past two years, is even in the bear market, were there long-term impacts even lasting like a couple months on the price of Bitcoin? The answer is no. Immediately, yes, there's some panic and there are some sharp wicks on the price. And that's what we need to watch out for. But will this conflict really lead to like a sharp, sharp, you know, correction for trend on Bitcoin? It doesn't actually show that. The few examples in this past two years doesn't actually show that. So that's the fundamental side that pulls me back the other way of um, of, of more reason. And then um, what's the next event coming up? It's the Bitcoin halving. So the Bitcoin halving, as we have uh, covered in yesterday's live stream, what does it actually bring? It brings volatility and it brings potentially shortened cycle because Bitcoin is at already such a high level, already touching its previous all time high. So chances are we are going to have a more explosive cycle lasting shorter, probably maximum one year from now. And uh, it's going to be kind of a difficult time for everyone if you are like not properly positioned. But will the Bitcoin halving lead to a crash? The answer is no. Bitcoin halvings happen very historically bullish events and it leads to volatility. It leads to short term, whatever like people feel, it will be amplified a bit. So if people are overly bearish, like uh, the 2020 halving, when we just had the COVID crash right before, the Bitcoin halving can lead to another drop. Sure. And like this time around, maybe we have a little bit of conflict. So yes, in the immediate short term after the Bitcoin halving in the week off, we could have some wicks. And that's what we need to be prepared for for Bitcoin to drop to that like $58,000 to $59,000 level in Wix. But that's about it. As long as we are prepared on the price of Bitcoin and as long as we are prepared uh, and betting on the right narratives, I don't think this is the time to panic. I really think this is the time to um, bet on the other side and scoop up some cheap coins because once this dust settles for the conflict and once the Bitcoin uh, halving event settles, 
in the next like two to three weeks, once May rolls around, I really think people are not going to be talking about these things anymore. This is usually what happens. And let's see, let's see how this goes. The only thing that we really need to pay attention to is how to control our leverage, how to control our risk. Even though we know that, okay, like this is going to be kind of a buy the dip event because of the large volatility that we may have, don't use leverage. Don't be greedy. Don't use leverage. Stay on spot and play with money that you can afford to lose so that you don't feel the panic, even if Bitcoin drops like in the immediate short term in the next couple of days to retest, you know, that 100 to 200 daily moving average like that $58,000 level, if it wicks here, you cannot hold such a large position in leverage that it makes you panic. As long as that doesn't happen, you're good. That's how I'm treating my portfolio, and hopefully that's helpful for you as well. Okay, that's it. Um, this is dragging on quite long already, so uh, I'm not going to do Q&A for today. So uh, thank you so much for joining. Before I go, two things you should follow me on. Number one is our Twitter Go on Twitter for uh, Virtual Bacon Zero X. This is where I drop my quick alpha before I make them into these in-depth videos. And second is make sure to join our Discord with the link in my bio or go to discord.gg slash virtual bacon. This is where I drop uh, Bitcoin analysis, altcoin analysis, daily alpha uh, for new altcoins, new airdrops, new token sales that I'm getting into, new narratives, etc. when we were getting into Bitcoin runes, for example, you can find that all in the Discord. So uh, even yesterday, I made a quick follow-up um, that I was going flat on short-term altcoin trades with leverage, only holding Bitcoin in ETF. Uh, so, sorry, only go holding Bitcoin into the halving, moving money to runes and ZK Sync, and this actually avoided us a little bit of panic from today's drawdown. So I think later on in today, I'm going to look to re-enter again. It's kind of a short term, but uh, we are already talking about another 20% that altcoins have dropped. So very sudden, very short term alerts. I always post them in Discord. So make sure to join with the link in my bio. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you on the next video and next live stream. Bye bye.